Okay. Sorry. Sorry for this delay. I was just trying to, to record this session. Uh, I was uh, welcoming you all to, to our fourth um, meeting and I prepared some slides, just a, a quick overview of what we have been done, done since uh, the, our first meeting. So, uh, in, the, in our first meeting, we spoke about the, the, the motivation that to uh, bring us all here. And, um, and I think I speak for, for you all because you are here and interested in, in speaking about this topic um you are you you see uh, entities as a, a, a need in in uh, this space um then we uh, approach uh, the space crease and uh, we saw uh, uh, how it how it can can manage the uh, the, the outdoors and then uh, afterwards, we we, uh, uh, we saw um, the installation and configuration and some some examples from also the space crease. At the end of that meeting, we uh, we we concluded that uh, the, the space crease is uh, very powerful, uh, but still uh, uh, it, it brings some complexity. Um, so uh, on our uh, last meeting, we we uh, we defined that we, we need to to do to to set a minimum uh, data model for entities um, and try to see if uh, the space crisis can answer to that uh, uh, the space uh, that uh, data model and. Um, this is our topic for today. Uh, we have prepared um, a, a document with, uh, I, I think it's not the minimum data model, but the, uh, quite extensive, quite an extensive one. I, I would like to, to hear from you for what do you think about it. Um, we defined uh, five uh, entities, publications. We all know the publications from this space. Uh, it's not uh, public, publication restricted, but uh, publications in, in a, a latter sentence. Um, people and people are authors and co authors and uh, uh, projects. We, we separated the projects from funding because we understand that uh, they aren't the same thing because you can have projects that have no funding and uh, when you have funding you, you can have uh, um, people or uh, publications that are funded in some, in some sense. Um, for each one of one, uh, for each of uh, one of these, uh, for each entity, we uh, define um, fields. This is uh, uh, probably too complex to 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 see in the screen. Perhaps it's more simple, simpler if you if you check uh, the, the the document and. Um, we define several fields and relations. We think that uh, DC contributor is an author and it's related and can be related with uh, uh, um, an author or an organization in some way. Um, we also uh, have people here that can be related with the organization, for example projects, funding. I don't think we, we, we can all uh, discuss the, 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 the importance of these fields, but I, I leave it open for you to, to say what you think about it. 
I don't know if you had time to, to check it or if you reserved this time for or this meeting to discuss it and see it for the first time. Um, I would like to hear from you what you think. That's my quick overview. <laughs> Yeah, th thanks, Paulo. Um, and thank you to um, you and the team for bring, getting together both this um, uh, the presentation here as well as the, the document itself. Um, I, I'll mention that I, I just reviewed the document this morning. I hadn't had much time up until now. Um, I, I think there's a lot of good detail there. Um, I don't want to get into the nitty gritty fields there. Um, but, but I think my first question would be whether or not um, this is the bare minimum of what we think uh, would be a minimum DSpace entities data model. Because uh, I'd, I'd challenge whether that's true. I can see the point in having all of these various entities for some institutions, especially institutions that want to run DSpace much more like a CRIS system, um, which is an, a use case that I think we should be supporting in the future. But, but for those that don't want to have a full-fledged uh, Chris system, um, I wonder about the usefulness of, of some of these specific entities, but that's kind of my question that comes to mind. So I'm just curious what others think. I think we have a lot of features in DSpace that many institutions don't use. So I don't see any problem in having some <coughs> entities that some institutions are using and others aren't. Um, from my perspective, I think you're targeting, I would even say all of the entities I had in mind. Um, what I'm missing, of course, are some small details. So for example, for publications, there are a lot of other metadata fields we need. I think that's totally clear to every one of us, but that's stuff that always will be like this and that we target in this space by allowing people to add local fields to, to their DSpace installation. So, as far as I've seen it now, I think that's, that's fine for me. And thanks for the work. I think uh, one, one of the questions here that, that was um, not addressed um, is that I mean, DSpace Chris has the opportunity to configure which entities you like, configure which relationships exist between entities, and configure which fields you have per um, entity. And here, what we see now, everything is more fixed. And I think the, a, a good discussion would be is how much of this do we want to make configurable? So you've defined the entities, the relationships, and their fields. Um, and the complexity that is involved with DSpace Chris comes from its flexibility of being able to configure all three levels there, um, entities, relationships, and fields. How far do we want to go in terms of configurability and how much complexity do we want to introduce? I think maybe Andrea would be... Um, Sorry to throw it at you, but uh, I mean, I would like to hear your input on that because you have more practical experience with what is often different and what it does really require configuration versus where it's a nice to have. Yes, I agree with your analysis. And uh, I think that the perplexity of uh, him at start also help to to understand how much important it is to have a data model that is flexible. So as the, the criticism from team essentially say, I'm not sure that uh, all the space users want to have a Chris. So um, I am a bit worried about having a funding project and things like that. This is my interpretation. Uh, and this means also that we are open to other use case of the space system, maybe in the cultural heritage, where all these entities don't make any sense, and we need something completely different. 
The, uh, the other thing is also if you are interested in a CRIS system, this is depend on uh, the maturity of your institution. This could be too much or uh, it could be not an out. So you need to add additional entities, you need to add additional attribute relation, you need to add uh, semantic over the relation. This is why we end with uh, uh, an extension of this space Chris that uh, uh, is not bound to any specific data model. So from my perspective, one simplification could be to say, we want to have a configuration of this space Chris out of box that is exactly this data model. And we ship this data model out of box with this space Chris and name that uh, basic data model for uh, Chris-like system. And maybe tomorrow we will create a new data model that is an extension or is something completely different for another use case. For my understanding, this is also the approach of the Prince community, where they have different flavor of a prints that essentially mean different configuration. Yeah, um, and just to clarify, uh, Andrea, thanks for that 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 uh, comment as well. Um, and to clarify what I was pointing at, it was what Andrea was was talking through is that um, I see the need for more entities in DSpace. Yes, I think everybody definitely needs, every DSpace user could benefit from having a people entity, for example. I think that's an obvious one that needs to be in the data model. Um, and I think that comes along with perhaps even an organization entity that seems pretty obvious to me that that should be out of the box um, and, and just there for everybody because everyone's going to get good use out of that. Um, I think the things that start to, I start to wonder whether they should be built in by default or whether they should be extensions like Andrea mentions are things like projects and funding where I see those as being highly beneficial if you are wanting to use DSpace more like a Chris-like system like Andrea is pointing out. But if you're wanting to use DSpace more like an institutional repository or a data repository or things of that nature, um, you may or may not get use out of those. Uh, so that does bring up to mind the question of, like Pascal mentioned, we could just include them by default for everybody. And yes, there are a lot of things that DSpace has that people don't use necessarily, depending on your use case. But there is also the opportunity here to, to think a little bit more about whether or not these are included out of the box, whether they are extensions, or whether, as Levin was pointing out, we do something along the lines of, of how DSpace Chris currently works, where certain entities are, are there and a little bit more fixed and other ones can be more dynamically added or enhanced upon. Um, so I guess that's, that's my opinion. So I, I have a little bit of a mix of the three last comments here. Yeah, Tim, I, I definitely agree with that. Like uh, what I was trying to, to um, get to is say, for example, I'm just, for example, right now, um, um, making a proposal like um, uh, that each entity has properties that are fixed, um, relationships that are fixed, and you can add extra um, properties for any entity that's there. And you can define extra relationships, for example. Maybe that is already quite complex to have that well configurable, but that you don't allow any entities, extra entities to be configurable. Or that you say, okay, people and organizations are fixed entities that are there, and then we have an additional implementation that is very similar to what DSpace Chris has at the moment, where you can define your own entity with um, relationships and with properties. So it's the question of which of these do we want to put in more hard-coded as part of DSpace, and which ones are as a configuration, um, and then we can extend that with what Andrea is saying is offering different flavors of configuration. And I, I agree with um, what you're saying is that people and organizations is applicable in probably every context, um, um, even in the the um, 
digital heritage um, context that Andrea was mentioning. Um, but for example, an ORCID identifier is not very applicable in that context. So properties should have always some degree of configurability. And um, uh, to comment on Pascal's um, uh, reaction, it's that I agree that there are things in DSpace now that people don't use, but you know, okay, yes, from a user perspective, you can easily ignore a feature that's not there. But from a community perspective, you need to maintain every feature that is there and port it to newer versions. And there, the more um, extra weight we have to carry, the more difficult it, it is to, to get a new version of DSpace out there. And given the fact that we currently don't have so many contributors from the broader community for, for example, DSpace 7, I, I would definitely see that as a concern. I don't know, Tim, what you think about that. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think that's that's totally accurate. The, the more that goes into the core code, um, the more that core team has to uh, both understand and support. Uh, whereas if there is a, a, almost a line we can draw between what is core and what is sort of an extension, then it might be plausible to have a, a separate team, whether they're some of the same people or not, um, support specific ex extensions. Um, it's where they'd be much more knowledgeable on the Chris extension or whatever other extensions you wanted to have there. But but I do agree that um, I, I, I like the sense of keeping the core code as streamlined as we can and allow for that sort of ePrints model that um, Andrea mentioned where you could have various extensions on that core code just because of the fact that the more streamlined you can make that core code, the more stable it can be and the more, um, less, the less you'll have to, to tweak it and, and play with it too much and you can have people more mess around and support the extensions on that core. Uh, I realize that's a ways off from where we currently are in DSpace, but that's kind of the direction I would like to see things move. As a team, as, as uh, we spoke, uh, in a meeting regarding, I think, uh, DSpace 7 or Angular, I, can't, I don't quite remember what was the, 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 the topic of that meeting, but, but uh, I'd say that we, we were um, going through a, a project that we are, we are using DSpace 5 and we are extending it to, to have support for the, the outsource entities, entity. Um, and and we are, we are um, to to manage to to do that we had to uh, change. I am speaking about the space five. I, I, we 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 choose that version. Perhaps perhaps in the version six it were it was uh, probably a, a different uh, implementation. But uh, we choose uh, the version 5 and we had to to change the this space uh, c uh, core to uh, be able to do uh, some of the things we did uh, i i think um i agree with all, all the, the, the i think we have we have a, a convergent approach here we all think we need entities we don't know exactly what entities should be in the core or w which properties should be in the, the core. But uh, I think uh, uh, we all agree that we need entities. And I think we shouldn't uh, change the core or the core should be uh, uh, prepared to anyone who wants to add their own entities to, to do that without changing the, the space core? What, what do you think about it? Um, I, I guess, are you talking similar to the model that DSpace Chris currently has, where you can extend with brand new entities onto that core? Is that what you're implying? Uh, 
something like that. But but I wasn't uh, talking about this space, Chris. I, I was talking about the, the, the space and how right. we, we want this space to be, uh, with or without uh, th those specific entities like uh, departments, organization, or something like that. Um, I, yes, I think, and I think you all agree that uh, uh, this space should be uh, prepared to support uh, the, the infrastructure for that without uh, having any programmer f to, to has to, to do any change to, to the to the space core system. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, I was using D space Chris as an example because I think they that was one of the things I was impressed with is that you can extend it to some extent by adding new entities and new properties to those entities uh, without having to go in and touch code. And and that is a model that I, I do like. So I, I think we're in agreement here, Paulo. I'm not saying that we need to um, force people to recode parts of D space in order to add new entities. I think that would be a a bad model for us going forward. Um, I think it's more of a model that is DSpace Chris like in that uh, you could extend it with new entities without having to go in and, and change the underlying database structure or uh, or change Java code. Uh, but those new entity and there may be some entities that could be turned on um, in some way that uh, that are not necessarily out of the box, but you could turn them on in an extension. So an extension could add in um, extra entities that are more CRISP specific, such as projects and funding. And maybe those aren't necessarily um, available out of the box until you install this extension. Perhaps so I think it, we're in agreement. Go ahead, Paula. Perhaps in, in a, a few years from now, uh, the space crease uh, will be a, a, a distribution f uh, of uh, space not a fork or something like that yes I think that's the plan all along nobody wants D space Chris to be a fork uh, we all see it as either a distribution or an extension or add-on where you would install D space and then you could easily almost like turn on the Chris extensions within the admin user interface or something which would pull down and install um, specific uh, entities into your system so that uh, and maybe some extra files or, or views that would uh, allow you to then use your system with this extra feature. So, uh, so yes, DSpace Chris should not and will not be a fork going forward. That's been the plan all along. I would like to hear, to hear from Jose Carvalho what is his yeah. opinion. Um. The, I, I think we are aligning regarding um, something that I, I was expected. The first one is that we don't need a, a this space that is something focused for institutional like Chris repository um, because this space itself it's a more wide project regarding the, the use cases we can have with this space. But I remember um, a tool uh, that is Drupal is a content management system that has its own core and then we can have uh, the distributions it's the same words that we use it right now uh, that can extend existing core of Drupal to an LNES or uh, anything more specific for specific use and I, I see the future of this space uh, as something like that so uh, the space core functionalities that are um, used for different types of use cases for a generic repository. And then we can have a, a layer uh, where we have specific configuration regarding the way and the objectives the repository will perform as a repository for an institutional repository for scientific publications or a research data repository, or um, a, a digital collection, or museums, or any other um, possibility we can define or have generic uh, aspects, or just be able to install the core features of the space. So I think if we consider this, we can uh, manage what is effectively important regarding the core development of the space. Uh, 
and then for example i see that um, at least with our experience that if you have uh, a display core that is able to 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 have a functionality that is basically create entities and describe these entities this is enough to create what we need here regarding the different five six seven ten entities we want to have um, and this is a core functionality and uh, on top of this core functionality we can have a distribution that basically creates uh, a standard uh, distribution of institutional repository based on these specific fields for specific entities for example and with that we are uh, making a step regarding the compatibility between the systems because if you have specific fields on the, um, the side of the repository we are able to integrate for example with ORCID. ORCID is not important as we said in other contexts but in the context of an institutional repository this is important also for example if you look for the funding and the project we can easily integrate with our other initiatives like open air or uh, the, the crossref uh, funded initiative so for me it's uh, not only uh, be able to create a better the space but also simplify um, uh, the, the the management of the repositories for the repository manager um, and for example in our uh, context at national level we create our own version of the space based on configurations, based on specific input forms, uh, based on specific standards we, we use, based on specific configuration for extending OAPMH, etc. And with that, we are able to have a totally compliant the space repository. So I think this idea of having a core the space and the distribution for different uh, components or use cases of the space can be useful um, to solve the problem that we have now that uh, uh, is one code for different the space possibilities uh, regarding what we will do with the repository. And we will solve also this problem of having something that is very focus on a particular use case um, so we are able to continue this vision of a wide space for generic use or have this kind of distributions on top of core the space to be able to perform better in different contexts and that's my opinion yeah and i agree with everything you just said um, Jose, I think that's that's the, the that opinion is shared um, as well. That I, I think that moving towards this idea of a core with those distributions is the way to to kind of meet all these various use cases without bloating uh, the D space code base so much that it becomes difficult to maintain and manage. Um, so, so I agree. I think Andrea, you were about to say something there, or someone else. I thought saw somebody else unmute. Yeah, the, the question is, is not so much uh, what, you know, what we want to achieve, because I think everybody wants entities, everybody wants a core that you can extend with distributions. The question is, how do we do it? And um, that's why Andrea gave a very good presentation uh, last time and gave an, a, an example of how that can be achieved. Um, and I mean, I think the 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 consensus there was it's very powerful, but it might be too flexible. And that the, the idea was that we would try to come up with um, a way to get to our goal in smaller increments and smaller steps and being very cautious and aware of, of um, how far we go in terms of configurability and, um, and what ends up in, in the core. Because at this moment, there is no relationship in D space between entities besides an item that can belong to a collection or a bitstream that belongs to an item. 
and how do we define those relationships? Um, which ones do we build in? Which ones do we make configurable? And how are they configurable? How do relationships get expressed? How does the system deal with that? And I think um, one of the proposals last uh, time we talked was just to take two or one entity and just you know really go into those details, um, compare how um, DSpace Chris is doing that right now, um, and then you know see what works well, what is is difficult, difficult to manage, difficult to understand, and how to improve that. So. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a good point, Levin. And I think that my response to that, my personal opinion, I guess, here is that um, I would want to look um, specifically at bringing people and organizations more into the core uh, and look at how we would build those relationships to the existing data model. Um, because I, I feel those those are used in almost every use case that someone is going to use DSpace in. People more than organizations, but I think both could, could come into core. And then potentially then look at, um, is there a way to build our data model that could allow an easy way to extend to support projects and funding uh, without necessarily bringing those into the core, but allowing them to be almost turned on or extended into the, the um, the DSpace data model without having to do database level changes or code changes. Yeah, I agree completely with that. And then um, at that, after we've brought people and organizations into the core and defined how the relationships uh, are, are established, how they're managed, um, and how we could add extra properties to um, entities like people and organizations, um, at that point, we could really look at uh, how DSpace Chris is doing the extensibility and then relating that to how we have to implemented the, the, those two extensions and try to combine best of both implementations and, and come to a, a stable extensibility. I, I can't agree more. <laughs> Sorry, I, I don't. I don't have anything more to to add to to what you just said. Okay, Andrea, what do you think about that? Because of course, um, the DSpace Chris implementation is already there, and um, it's quite important that we do align with it as much as possible. Uh, unfortunately, I, I'm not sure that there is a mid step. So the space right now is something with a, a fixed data model. And the space Chris is the next step where you have a flexible data model. And I don't think that exists uh, anything in the middle. To be more clear, it, if we have a, a person entity in the space, but it don't have the flexibility to link it to a new entity or add a, a rich attribute to this new entity, it will, will end for us to, to be impossible to implement some use case, some customization that the user want. So it will become more complicated than now, uh, than now. So when we need to create a new flavor of the space, if we start from the space Chris, it is easy to create the crease, the glam, and other flavor. But if you want to start from the space, anytime you need to rebuild the same, the same thing. That is the same that also you have recently developed for extension to create a new entity in the semantic layer. So if you add just one entity or two entity or 10 entity, this don't change. Uh, it is not really important. So what we are saying now that we really need to have the ability to create a new attribute and create a new relation and create new entities. Because in the last 10 years, I never see the, the same data model that apply to all the university. 
For some university, it is crucial to have information about teaching activities, supervisor thesis, courses, and other information also in, uh, in the repository. So it is not a CRIS, it is not a repository, but this is important. And if we need to implement externally as an, an extension, also if we implement a plugin system uh, in this space like WordPress or uh, Drupal, if we need to implement in, in our plugin the logic to, to have an extendable data model, this plugin become huge. That is what is happened to this space Chris at the end. Because Andrea, this space was built on top of, of the space. Andrea, I think we're, just to, I don't want to interrupt, but I feel like we may, I think you and I might be more aligned than, than you may think. <laughs> um, I, I actually, and maybe others, maybe that maybe I misstated this. Um, in my, my stating of saying bringing people and organizations into DSpace core, I'm not stating that that should be in a separate release from the other work. I'm not trying to stage this out. I'm, I'm talking about it in an analysis aspect right now. Um, so I'm not talking about release by release. I mean that the first thing that we should be analyzing is we need to analyze how would we bring people and organizations into the core? What would that look like? How would we um, define those relationships with the existing data model? Um, and how does DSpace Chris do that? Um, so I want to analyze that. And then we know that we need to be able to have extensions to support projects and funding. Those extension, extended and new entities should not be an external add-on. Um, those should be part of the core as well. That ability to extend and create new entities should be part of the core as well. Um, so then we need to figure out how could we add that sort of extendability into the core, look at how DSpace Chris does that, analyze how that is being done in DSpace Chris, and define how that should be brought into the core. Um, so I, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to cut out DSpace Chris's way of doing things here. And in fact, I think the way you've done things is quite good there. And we need to be looking at that very closely. And I'm not trying to stage this out over several releases where we just say, OK, now DSpace supports only people. And now it supports organizations. And then eventually, you know, three releases from now, we're going to start to um, explore this extendable entities. But rather, I'd like to plan this out kind of together. Does that make sense? And does that align with what you're thinking, Andrea? Because I kind of feel like it does, unless I'm misunderstanding you. I, I think, oh, sorry. No, I, I understand that uh, we are converging about uh, the opinion, but my um, worry here is then the difficulty are in the detail in this right. case. So what I'm trying to say is, once we figure out how to introduce people in an extendable way, we have done 99% uh, of work to have uh, all the stuff that are important in this space, Chris, in this space. Okay. So this, this is on the only point. So if you look to this space, Chris, there are several layers of functionality in, in it. For instance, the extendable data model for me is the most important and is what we are talking about now. Another layer is the administrative user interface. And as I said, we can discuss about that. This can go later. It, it can be also something that we don't want to have. So it is not necessary to have a user interface to, to manage the model. But the model is the core is what we need to put inside. If we are able to do that in a flexible way for just another entity, we have done for all the entities. Yeah, so what, what I was uh, pr proposing is that, you know, we do the, um, um, we add people and organization um, in a, like this is a phased approach, right? Like, because, you have the experience with how to make it extensible, but not everyone in this group does. And that's how this whole you know, working group was started, that, that people didn't understand how DSpace Chris does it exactly. And, um, and we're not sure about how far we should go with certain things. So if we first implement people and organizations and 
exactly like Tim said, not per se in a separate release of DSpace, but like as a first step um, towards an extensible data model and first really think about, okay, how should we define relationships between entities in DSpace? How should we add uh, a new entity without having to worry about implementing the configurability and then later on thinking about, okay, we now have a DSpace with two extra entities. How can we take this implementation that we're happy about? Um, how can we take this to the next step and make this entirely configurable where you can configure the entities, the relationships and the properties. And maybe in the first step, we could already look at how to configure the properties and maybe the relationships, but wait with how the entities should be configured. So we can take a little bit of a, a step uh, approach. Um, and I understand that in your head, this is already clear because you have the DSpace Chris implementation there, but I don't think that that goes for everybody in this, in this group. I agree with Levin. I think the space should follow his own path. He, he, looking at also at the, the, the space Chris experience, but I think he should follow the, his path. And I don't know <laughs> what do so, you think about this? If I understand Andrea correctly, what he wants to point out is it makes no difference if you create public, uh, if you create, for example, projects as entities, or if you create the possibility to add any entity to D space. And I think Levin is saying almost the same thing. He's saying, let us implement one concrete entity, and then we can go on from this to see how we can build it in a way that we can create any entity with it. Perhaps you can both tell me if I'm right or not, and if, if there's some, some common point on this. Yeah, Pascal, you, you completely understood what, what my point was, is to look at one particular entity implemented more as hard-coded until we've looked at all the, the problem areas that are um, involved in that, like for example, if you create people, do you add people to search? If you have a search for items, how do you then relate it to people? How do you show those people? How can you then look at the, uh, the items that do, that are associated to those people? Will we have different types of people? How many properties do we need to have as the standard set of properties? How many do we want to be configurable or extendable? How can we? make the, the, the relationships between people and organizations or um, uh, items and organizations directly or the relation between item and organizations only through people and et cetera, et cetera. So there are a bunch of things to, to think about there. And of course, I, I'm, I'm aware that Andrea already has that, um, has done that exercise in the last, what is it, eight years, Andrea? Um, but it would be very useful for everyone else in this group to go through that first step to be able to then have a proper discussion about how do we make these things entirely configurable. And I think to make it just right, you don't propose to release any DSpace that have added these hard-coded entities. You just want to have it as an exercise on the way to develop a complete free model with free ent entities, right? Yes. Yeah, so so if I can jump in here, um, I, I agree. I agree with this to a point, although I'm not convinced fully of the implementation part of this. Um, so I agree, I think we do need to, to go through this exercise that Levin laid out. And I think it does align, uh, I think um, I also agree that we don't all have the understanding that Andrea has um, with how this, how DSpace Chris was built. However, I'm not yet convinced that we actually need to implement anything. I, I think we need to go through the exercise of designing and re-architecting um, and, and produce diagrams, documents, all the things that we would produce that would allow us to build people and organizations into the DSpace data model. But I'm not yet convinced we actually have to do that in code, if that makes sense. I think it's a more of an analysis to me to, to go through uh, specifically people and organizations to see how we would implement them, find the problems, let Andrea point out other problems that we may have missed, um, and go through that process so that we can learn from that in order to uh, be able to come back to how DSpace Chris has done things and, and be much more knowledgeable about the process of do we bring in DSpace Chris as it currently exists uh, to some extent? Are there things that we have discovered along the way that 
are missing or are gaps or things that we feel that are um, that it wouldn't um, apply well to. So I guess that's how I would approach this. Yeah, and, and code is more like in terms of prototyping things, um, not okay. Yeah, if production. we're prototyping, that's that's okay. I'm just worried about going down the the aspect of doing too much code and then having to go back and rip things out uh, that we realize are not applicable anymore. Then in prototyping, I mean, performance, scalability, those kind of things need to be tested through some kind of rough prototype and you can't just um, do that strictly based on analysis, but indeed. Yeah, I think the worry that I have is that, um, so I agree with that. I, I think I would like to come to an area though where we can actually make a knowledgeable decision on whether or not uh, what um, for science has in DSpace Chris is good enough. Um, I don't want to throw it completely aside and start working on something completely different that takes us two to three years to realize, oh, this is not um, going in the direction we think it should be going and we should have used uh, DSpace Chris all along. I would rather see if we could come to that conclusion and make the mistakes that allow us to analyze that code much more rapidly um, so that we aren't building something in parallel that is already built, if that makes sense. So I think that's where, where I'm trying to come from, that I don't know that we need to do it all in code, but we definitely need to dig a lot deeper and start to analyze and re-architect DSpace at least uh, conceptually. Does that make sense? Yep. And Andre, I don't know what you think about all of this discussion. Yes, I agree with your point. So from our perspective, it could be useful and interesting to work on to the space data model to go more close to the space Chris data model. So to, to make the space item more similar to Chris entities, for instance. Mm -hmm. But on the other side, uh, I see, sorry to say that, but it, it is waste of time essentially for us to redo the same, uh, all the same step that we have done in, the, in more than 10 years. So, well, yeah, yeah, yes and no, Andrea. I mean, um, DSpace Chris is a good implementation, but it's not a 100% perfect implementation, right? There are improvements that are possible. So there is some point in going through that process. But uh, in going through that process, as Tim said, we should first look at um, how does DSpace Chris solve this before we actually start doing any work because then we would be doing useful uh, unuseful things and, and then it would have no point right that, that's what you were going uh, or uh, talking about Tim right uh, correct yeah so so kind of picking off chunks of it so yeah starting with like people how would we implement this in, in DSpace how does DSpace Chris currently do this do we see any gaps in and how that would work um, and then moving on from there into various other entities and building more of a planning document and, or an architectural document of this is the future architecture of DSpace. These are the various options of how we could implement this. Um, and, and hopefully we, that would help us all come to much more of a consensus around uh, is the DSpace Chris way a better way of starting, of getting started and actually doing this in code? Or do we see uh, larger flaws along this process that maybe we can grab some of the DSpace Chris code, but we really need to rebuild a lot of this. Because uh, I, I am totally unclear in my head as to which direction is correct at this point. Yeah, and then, I mean, also, um, as Andrea just pointed out, like, um, I mean, the current DSpace data model, I mean, even if, if let's say we would add hard-coded people and organizations, and then make it extendable, that's still like the same thing as keeping what we have now with items, communities, collections, um, and then extending people and projects and whatever. That's what DSpace Chris now has. And I think what Andrea is also trying to say is that that existing data model should also be flexible and we should not just keep that as fixed. And, and Correct, yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. So we should analyze the item 
data model especially and and see if it really aligns well with the publications or works that we're kind of talk, starting to talk about here um, and whether there are ways that data model itself needs to be changed or improved. So I agree. Yeah. I see two, me uh, two measures uh, of labor into the space data model right now. It is uh, the absence of type in the property. So all the information uh, in the item are just string. And this makes several limitations when you need to, to store some kind of information, but also to link, to create a relation. Because you want to have some integrity or the ability to, to point uh, to the other entity. And the other limit is the, um, the flat uh, model, the flat metadata. So you are not able to, to store any nested information. This right. is the reason, reason why we don't have created the, the researcher or the organization as just a new space object with, uh, uh, um, with dynamic metadata because we already have metadata for all that allow you great flexibility in terms of property that you can attach to entities. So if you create a, write a new Java class that is uh, an extension of a space object, you have a new entity. And this entity can have any property that you want. This is what we already have in the space code base. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, but you, sometimes you need to do some changes in that core to, to, to make it more flexible or to adjust to your needs, specific needs. Did you did you add the those needs in, in when you started implementing this this space Chris or do do you need to do you, do you have add the need to change the the source code this space source code in this space Chris yes of course <laughs> because if you look to the search or browse or or the functionality built on top of uh, this space object they are only partially generic for this space object, but are more tailored to this space item or community or collection. Was when we start to do that, we find that uh, it was tricky to have some data stored in the wrong type. So we need to have a date and it was much more convenient to have really a date in the database than have a string and any time fight uh, against conversion. So this is why we have started and say, okay, the new entity will be created uh, uh, in a way that property have a proper type. And when we have uh, had the, uh, the need to manage nesting, we have decided to manage nesting really and don't try to use the place to keep together multiple metadata or any other trick. Mm -hmm. but, but, but if uh, this space was different, if it presents you some solutions to your initial problems, do you think it would be better to, for, for your, uh, I, I was, let me think <laughs> first, <laughs> if you, if, if this space was different and uh, that different, uh, that different could could uh, solve you some problems. Uh, I, I'm, I'm just, if the starting point of, of for your work was different, uh, yes, of course. If you start, uh, you change the the condition. We can have take a different. Uh, I, I think I think we we in a other meeting or, or something like that. We should discuss what this space should have in the, the core for you, you don't have to change it to implement this space Chris model on top of it. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a great point, Paulo. And I think that's exactly what we're, that, that would be what would be necessary to allow DSpace Chris to be more of an extension and less of a fork. Because the reason why it is kind of a fork right now is because they have to modify that core code 
um, in order to make it all work right, like Andre is noting. Um, and I think what Andrea has already pointed out is there's a few core things that we need to have in DSpace Core that aren't there, like the the type of fields um, and the um, the the metadata that is hierarchical in some way, shape, or form. So those are two things right away that would need to be solved um, in the core, uh, and there may be others. But but I like that direction of starting to look at that. One of the things I, I thought it would be a, a major feature was <laughs> that is a new feature was the the triggering triggers uh, when you uh, do something you can fire uh, actions to to do stuff right like event handling sort of yeah. thing you you have one in this space but uh, the, right. the the implementation should be. Uh, uh, more advanced that it is. Right, yeah, I agree. That could help us, for instance, if you import uh, data, you can trigger uh, relations or the creation of our relationship after the, the, you import me, uh, batch metadata. Yep, yeah, I see that. So. So it sounds, uh, I see we're at the top of the hour. Do we want to? Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, unfortunately, I got to go here shortly as well. So we probably need to, to wrap this up and figure out uh, when the next meeting is and, and, and how we want to dig deeper into this, these ideas of what needs to be added into the core that's missing and how we can start to plan out and architect how people and organizations and other entities would be, um, would be uh, supported in the core. Probably, Tim, you are in the best position to, to recommend someone uh, to help us uh, thinking on these core subjects and besides uh, Andrea. Uh, but I think uh, we can uh, work on this uh, planning or, or analysis that you, you pointed out. Yeah, yeah, I think the people in this group are the right group to help us with that analysis. Um, okay. So I think it's a matter of uh, setting up the next meeting as well as um, somebody starting to draft something up in a document. Okay, uh, I, I, I can do this document. I can do that. that. I can do that. So I think it's a continuation of this discussion. Um, yes. Uh, I, I'm still going to note here and be aware of the fact that uh, some of the folks in this group are very heavily involved in DSpace 7, yes. and there's a lot of ramping up going on with that too. So I, I, I think this may take some time still, yeah. but I think it's the right direction and the right discussion. I, I was uh, uh, thinking that we can have uh, our next meeting in three or four months, perhaps. I don't know if it's... Uh, Three or four months or three or four weeks? Ah, sorry. <laughs> uh, I don't know. What What do you think, Paul? Maybe at the, I don't know, one month or uh, at the end of February or something like that. I don't know. Because we are now at uh, today's 19, maybe 16 of February or... 19th of February, or I don't know. Yeah, I'm available uh, um, on the 16th or, or that following week for the most part. So if you want to do another, do we need to do another doodle poll or do we? Yeah. Maybe you can do it No. Who's you, me or Paulo? Paulo Graça. <laughs> okay. Yes, <laughs> I, I can do it. I don't know. Sorry. Okay, Sorry. thank you. It proposed to, to date or something or three. Okay. But yeah, I think mid-February sounds fine to me. Okay. And we will work on that draft, document draft, uh, and share with you and uh, for comments. Sounds great. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you all. I enjoyed Thank this you. discussion. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.